Welcome to the First Issue Club Comic Book Podcast. We're your weekly comic book reading club that covers First, first issues. issues. That's right. I'm Mike D. I'm Greg. I'm Budget King. And we're going to be talking about Slumber out on Image Comics today. If you're part of the club, hopefully you've read along with us and are ready to chat. A new independent book. Oh, yeah, baby. First, we're going to cover some comic book news per use. Oh, yeah. News per use is the name of this segment. News that you can snooze to. (laughs) (laughs) I I have something I want to get out real quick. I want to thank our sponsors, Boulevard Beer, for sponsoring the show. Space Camper IPA. Yum, yum. Give me some in my tum-tum. It's delicious. And why is it so delicious today? Well, because Budget King decided to play a trick on me (laughs) and give me some whiskey before the show that's been flavored with bananas. Some people like it. It is the most bizarre taste in my mouth right now. <laughs> and I don't, I've never seen bourbon with banana flavoring in it. Decla- and it seems almost sacrilegious. To clarify as trick, I gave it to you. No, here's the thing. <laughs> you withheld the space camper mm-hmm. until he took the you were, shot of monkey You were bullying bourbon. me. That's a good point. You I'm bullied sorry. me. You, you pushed me down, broke my Tamagotchi, <laughs> and said, drink this. I do like watching people drink things that they don't enjoy. <laughs> well, I did not enjoy that. Um, yeah, but shout out to Space Camper for cleansing your palate. Yeah, for washing that terrible <laughs> taste out of my mouth. Drink shit liquor, drink a Space Camper. <laughs> <laughs> It'll even the keel. If you're uh, having a little bit of that, what's that like? Uh, oh, Rumble Mints? If you get, it's a light oh, night, you yeah. get Rumble Mints, chase it with Space Camper, you'll be fine. It's a nice even out. What the worst liquor I've ever had was Malort. Yeah, definitely for sure. And I think that's like the the king. That's like that's what they base their There's product off some, of. Like, is it a Canadian hockey thing? There's some reason they drink it. It's from Chicago. Okay, that's this is Chicago thing. It was awful. Did we drink it together? Probably. Yeah, yeah. you had it on your birthday right before COVID happens. They call it a Chicago handshake. They give you a shot of Malort and an old style beer. Oh, because we were in Chicago. C two E two. Yeah, that's right. Um, I. I wonder if Malort is a thing that we really only know about in the Midwest. Maybe. it's a. I read up on it, and it's a digestif. In, in, yeah, yep, exactly. Helps your tummy. Anyway, what's the, what's the news? Oh, did you see that Dark Horse was purchased? Yes, by a video game company. Yeah, the video... Oh, that happened a while back, though, right? It got solidified uh, yeah. last week. Oh, okay. The, yeah, the acquisition is by Embrace Group. Um, which Famous is, for what games? Um... Saints Row and like some other not a bad game some not a bad franchise there was like some pretty big games they they okay. own like 10 other companies so here's the thing is that now that Bandcamp also go bought by Epic Games uh-huh. are just video games going to own well everything Valiant is also owned by Capcom a, a or claim something? or a claim yeah okay so i i actually was going over this in my head they famously got bought by a claim in the 90s mhm I think Valiant bought themselves back. They did. And then I think they got rebought. Okay, so Acclaim like failed terribly. No, they got rebought by Acclaim again? Did Okay, no wait, you're right. Yeah. So they they like Acclaim bought them. Yes, and then they to, bought themselves back. Trying yeah. to do this. Now, the word is Acclaim, you should have waited till the 2020s where video games can successfully buy media They're or hot. Yeah. Hot, hot. But in the 90s you failed terribly and then Valiant also failed and bought themselves back and continues to fail. And that makes sense because that's why we haven't seen any, like, Turok video, yes. uh, oh, comic right. books from Valiant because Acclaim kept the rights to that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, interesting. So, uh, but yeah, are video games just going to own everything? I mean... I think it's like a conglomerate kind of thing. Yeah. Wherein, yeah, I mean, eventually, yes. They'll own cars. They'll own... I would drive a Ford Nintendo. <laughs> When they bought uh, Bandcamp, Epic Games, mm-hmm. they were like, this is going to be a new venture for our media, videos, something. And then it was like, music was like fifth. And, and it was like, oh man, <laughs> they have no intention of keeping the integrity of this yeah, product. You don't really understand the thing you bought in its audience. Yeah. <laughs> That's rough. At they least with got um, money. Dark Horse being acquired, you kind of understand that maybe there's some rights there to games that people would really be stoked for. Like, there's never been a Hellboy game, right? No. But here's the thing. With Dark Horse as a publisher being bought, Mike Mignola still 
owns the intellectual yeah. property, right? Right. Um, I don't know if they it, could just make whatever video game they want. It's not quite the same as like Image or whatever. Uh-huh. So there's probably something wrapped up in that. There's Black Hammer, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a handful of other cool shit. I wonder if they're just buying it just to expand rather than buying it for the. Uh, I think the. IP. I think. The, I think they're buying it to diversify. Yeah. And maybe make some uh, comic books off of their video game properties, and then maybe just invest more in the. Co- comic book side of Dark Horse and maybe make a little more money on that side too. Oh, that's true. Dark Horse does have a kind of a history of publishing books based on video games that aren't half bad. Yeah, they have a handful of that. They, I think on. they did the Tomb Raider one. They did the Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. They did that, which was which, great. Which was a really good uh, Colin Bunn wrote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's... so yeah. that, that acquisition doesn't terrify me. I don't really. I like Dark Horse a lot as a publisher, and I think they do some really solid books. And mm-hmm. if this gets them more funding, and they're going to continue to do that, great. If this means we're going to get more video game comics, I don't care. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and nobody cares, by the way. So just as the thing, if they're if you're like an industry guy, which I know you are, and you're listening here, and you want like some um, inf- free, free press, yeah, info. You ain't going to make money on video game comics. There is no. The well is dry, my friend. <laughs> Unless you make a really good one, and then kudos I'm sorry, to you. No, there's pair no, with the stray dogs. There is literally cover artist. Here's the thing: every agency in the world is saying, uh, "Let's make some fucking like t-shirts. Let's get like Louis Vuitton on here. Oh, make a fucking comic book for your thing." And it's just an agency idea, and it doesn't make money, and it's dumb. And your your video game comics don't sell. I'm sorry. Goodbye. You have to be such a psycho for content. <laughs> For the thing that you and for the th- game that you like, right? That you're just like, mm, I'm insatiable. I ran out of Tomb Raider. Right. I it's... ran out of Drake's Uncharted. <laughs> I need like, more. <laughs> Drake's. Un- Where's my Witcher comic? It's like Sonic end of list. <laughs> really, I mean that's the one that's been the most successful. Yeah. The Sonic ones. But other than that, it's like nope. Yeah, and they're so. geared towards younger audience. Yeah, it's just not gonna work. People that buy comics are us, and we buy. We would not buy a video game comic unless we just had to cover it for the show. Sorry. Right. So yeah, I don't think there's a ton of overlap, at least for weekly comics. I could see someone who plays a video game being like, "Oh, I have an Amazon gift card." Right. Yeah. I'm looking at he- graphic novels, and there's one for the video game. So here, like. here's where I think they think this is going to work because if you go to any comic con convention and you were to divide up the cosplay per percentage video game overwhelmingly larger percentage of video game cosplay Uh so it is the largest fandom probably the largest money maker so they're like Mm -hmm. well these conventions are the word comic is in the convention and that's where it's happening yeah yeah so we got to be there i think you're right mike d make them original graphic novels get them released in like barnes and nobles and like bookstores and shit like that and let's say make a little bit of scratch I also kind of think maybe we're thinking of the wrong sort of video games when we're having this conversation. Like we're thinking the tra- burger time. <laughs> we're thinking traditional narrative style games when in reality things like you know Summoner War that they made a video God. game out of like, well, or a, a comic book yeah. out of I mean which is a cell phone game. Which, yeah, which is a phone mm-hmm. game. Like, I think those phone games... <laughs> Hearthstone. No. May, maybe have a better potential a for selling that, than even, like, th- shit like Tomb Raider. As a person that addictively played Summoner Wars for about two years of my life, <laughs> I could not have given two shits about it. <laughs> oh, maybe I'm wrong, then. It's like a Clash of Clans comic. Nobody yeah, gives a shit. But, yeah, you don't think if they made a Clash of <laughs> Clans or a Fortnite comic, people would be like, yes. Look at Magic. My- Minecraft. Do Look- they make Minecraft comics? I think they do. Oh, man, they would would sell like gangbusters. Yeah. Move over, Captain Underpants. <laughs> I Minecraft think, comics are here. I think stuff here. like that that can maybe be geared more towards kids in his cell phone games has a better chance of selling. I think that there are people that get paid to do this and it's not making them any money and they always just dissolve it. Like Magic the Gathering tries this all the time. Oh yeah, they're on Boom last I remember. They, they got They've moved around to a million different publishers. They got Brandon Sanderson to do one. Mm-hmm. And his deal was, make it for free and give me a lifetime supply of Magic the Gathering cards. <laughs> oh, hell yes. That's how you cut a deal. I knew they did it. That's how thirsty they were for that. Well, when you have the highest grossing Kickstarter in history, in history. you can just pretty much call your own shots. Yeah. 
Um, so that yeah, I guess like I hope that uh, Dark Horse, the you know, like think about this: you work at Dark Horse for thirteen years, maybe you own a little bit of it, and it gets like bought out. No, you're fucked. That mm-hmm. they didn't go public. Sorry, I did the wrong nope. math on that. Yeah. I hope I hope somebody got a payday. That's a good. Indie, that's a good person. It, that's an indie person. <laughs> the Colin Bunn thing was cool because. It was like a side story about a character you couldn't play in Cyberpunk. Mm-hmm. And so like a lot of people kind of like really love obviously love that game um in the end <laughs> after the after fucking all the terrible fixes. start for like 6 months of its life. And I think that was a cool way to do it. So I guess if that's how you like I don't know. You... I like that. It enriches the world. Yeah. It's like the um side story episodes of Orange is the New Black. And how they're always the best ones. Yeah, I think that's good. Or yeah. Atlanta is the same way. Right, yeah. yeah. We're going to learn about this other character for a day. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that, that was my big bombshell of uh, of a news. What do you got, G-Man? Uh, Well, as of this recording, the Miss Marvel trailer got released for oh, the Disney yeah, Plus yeah, show. Yeah. Did you guys check it out? I did. Is it? It's geared for a little bit people younger than us. Is it that... seems like a Boy Meets World kind of superhero uh, show. I'm down for that. I mean, like, yeah. it's a fucking 13-year-old, so... Yeah, it seems cool. People are kind of pissed off because she doesn't have her um, in-biggin powers, which makes her super elastic and can morph her body. Oh, do we know that yet, though? It showed so little. Well, they... They People showed will like never she, be happy. I know everyone's always pissed off all the time on on the internet. You and... were fighting so many, like you were you were putting out so many Twitter fires. On this. Oh, this week? Yeah. yeah. It's been a fucking hellscape. Yeah. It's terrible. I love it. But she has like these bracelets that like give her these almost kind of cosmic green lantern powers where she, instead of like her arm getting really big, like it shoots like an energy beam in the form of an arm. But that could evolve into her actual arm growing or whatever. But uh-huh. uh, you're right. From the trailer, we didn't get too much, but the- people are just ready to burn down <laughs> Marvel headquarters think, over this. You think Lockjaw is going to be in it at all? That would require the Inhumans being canon in the MCU. They can't just throw a bulldog in there? Or like, oh, yeah. He's like a bulldog. Yeah, he could be like an homage to Lockjaw. Yeah, he doesn't need to have the... It would be amazing if he did show up. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of hope that, like, Inhumans do show up, like, in uh, Captain Marvel 2. Mm -hmm. Because that's where all the Marvel characters are, uh, like, Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel. Who owns the Inhuman show that got made? Marvel made it. Yeah. But it was, they just kind of like I said, please forget this. <laughs> God, I want to say it was on ABC. Okay. Who was running Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. at so the time. So they definitely do not consider it canon in any way. I think so. It's like the, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. diverse. Okay. Like, it's in there. It's in like, it's kind of a murky water of, <laughs> if you like this, it's canon. If you don't, it's not canon. <laughs> that show. I well, never saw it. God bless them for trying. <laughs> and it's not like, I think that actors were fine. It was just like it didn't make much sense. Um yeah. I watched the entire thing. You did? The, yeah. You fucking love that like ABC trash shit. One of <laughs> one of like I mean obviously when you say inhumans the first thing you think of is Medusa and all that hair and how cool of a character that would be mm-hmm. in a movie or show. Yeah. And the first episode they shave her head Whoa. to like take her power away. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, okay. to me, that was like them saying, hey, the hair stuff is too big budget for mm-hmm. the show. So we're taking away the most iconic thing about Inhumans. Yeah, they really neutered it <laughs> real quick. So it just from the beginning, it kind of just didn't make sense or work. It seemed almost and, too grand of an idea. Well, Yeah. And it also seemed like a couple episodes in they were like. They decided it wasn't going to work, but wanted to finish it anyway. So it was like your budget is now. Don't they have the guy a that a uh, teeny fraction of what it had once been? What's it? I, I don't know why I drew a blank on his name, but the guy that can't talk because he'll like fucking kill you. Black yeah, Bolt. Black Bolt. Black yeah. Bolt. Yeah. Is he in it? Not talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not that's talking. another thing. A lead in a show that doesn't that can't talk. <laughs> it's it was hard. Like hard to deal with. Yeah. 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 Did you do sign language at least? I think so, but it was like not ASL. Okay. He but he had like, like he had like ways of communicating. It's even worse. Yeah. But now with that like Coda movie out, which has like yeah. the lead that it's like all in sign language, like I think now it's the perfect time to like reintroduce inhumans. Go, to be go back and redo it. Yeah, there's ways to do it. Yeah. They just didn't 
know how at the time. Yeah. I think, honestly, it just came out too early. Like, the technology wasn't there. It probably shouldn't have been a show. Like, they just do a movie and, like, make it big budget, but... This was the... At the time, I feel like the motivation was Marvel's not going to get X-Men back, so we need to make Inhumans the new X-Men. That's a, I, I mean, I think that's verbatim what they were trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. And it, then now that Marvel's acquired Fox, they're just like, we don't need to introduce a lick of this. But I also never thought they would have introduced Eternals either. To me, like, Inhumans and Eternals are kind of on par with, like, why would you make that a movie? Yeah. I'm not saying I didn't like the Eternals movie. I did. It just blew my mind to find out that, like, that was the direction they were going because the story is so convoluted and big. And it seems hard I think to find just, a place for it. I think they have so much money yeah. that they're like, we need to make some, <laughs> some crate digger shit some like some what else like, can we try yeah they're just like we we'll just like dare me to fail we just point. need to make some like cult shit yeah so that we have that like the dusty shit in the back that people really go <laughs> off on make a demolition movie yeah. now we need the hot take movies the people that say that's the best marvel movie so oh that... yeah well that definitely <laughs> the eternals then there's also such a small group of people that hold eternals really sacred i think that it was it was a great opportunity for them to do the diversity in casting mm-hmm. that the Marvel Universe needed mm-hmm. and not have people be like, I don't like it because this is not canonical. Yeah. Just like you're saying, like people are pissed about Miss Marvel because she... Her powers aren't right. Because her hand doesn't get big enough. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's such, people can't it's be such garbage on the internet. It, but that's I mean, such a small, really, like, those are, like, the the loudest people, but there's such a small fraction of the amount of people who are going to ultimately end up enjoying and consuming the content. He, here's yeah. my thing on this, because I don't really engage comic movies like that. Like, I don't I don't have a ownership over superheroes where I, like, care. Yeah. The Magicians was, like, a book series that I love that we've read together. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, the show, the show. Yeah, and so and, and I've loved it enough that I've um I've read it a couple times. I know Caitlin watched this, the show. Or oh, watched, and she read all the books, too. She did. Okay, yeah. Um, I watched the show, and it was just so jarring that how they jumped around mm-hmm. um, that it was, like, it gave me a headache. And so I didn't really watch it. I wasn't mad about it. Most people I mention the magicians to, they're like, I loved that sci fi show. Like, they just like talk yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, fucking great. You love a thing that I love. Yeah. It's like loosely connected. They do different things. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. They're, and like, and I know that like the author was involved in the making of it mm-hmm. and he got a huge payday from it and endorses it and loves it. So, like, I'm just happy that mm-hmm. the world continued. Mm hmm. That seems to me like why would that not just be if you're a fan of a thing, just the general? Not like I'm a fucking saint or something. Because people want a carbon copy of the thing that they love. But it's you know what I mean? Because they it's, think they own it. Is that why they they have they? Yeah, you're right. They believe they have ownership of it because they connected with the character so much, yeah. so they get really protected. Yeah, and then it's just like they think that since you have a comic book of it, you can just make it just like it is in the comic books, and it's like, well, this is. It's just like a different interpretation of it and a different way of getting to the same ending that you got to in the comic book. So, like, just be fucking chill for a minute and enjoy the ride. And people can't handle that. People take, like, a, a really big offense to it because they just, like, emotionally emotionally connect to, like, Superman so much that they're just like, well, Superman wouldn't do this. <laughs> it's like, well, Superman isn't fucking real, yeah. so <laughs> calm down. And there are things about Superman that we take for granted as being like insane aspects of the character because he was introduced in what like the 30s or something sure, yeah, yeah. yeah that as as it's progressed over time and you've had your whole life to soak it in like you, they don't seem crazy or insane to you but if they tried to do this or that in a movie mm-hmm. you would be like what the fuck so <laughs> you can't be you can't be mad about that and, and they, i think miss marvel being an inhuman is one of those things yeah yeah I mean, I, they'll figure it out as they go. I I love that it's like a high school kind of like totally. It's like, gonna be fine. Yeah, I've yet to see a bad Marvel TV show. F- fuck yeah, exactly. So they spend too much money on it, right? To be so bad calm the do. fuck down, everybody. <laughs> I'm really interested to see how much for kids it really is. Yeah, I think it's gonna really skew towards towards kids based on yeah, like the high school age, like like the but, Disney Channel. 
era is like what but we're fuck shooting yet, for that's here. That's what it should be. Like yeah, that, no I, fucking shit. Like Alex Mack. Yeah, <laughs> that's because that's the new audience that's gonna grow up with these Marvel characters. Yeah, you guys see the trailer for the um, second Spider-Man uh, in, Into the Spider-Verse movie? Hell yeah, it looks rad. The uh, so the director of that movie has said that like every multiverse that they jump to in the Into the Spider-Verse 2, which there's going to be like a, a few. Have their own art style. Have their own art style. That's so rad. So like this movie's going to be even wilder and I'm completely here for it. I love it. Yeah, the first movie was amazing. Let's get into slumber on Image Comics. <laughs> Story by Tyler Burton Smith. Does anyone know anything about this author? Uh, he's like a, a screenwriter. He's written for Child's Play and... Uh, Kung Fury? Kung Fury 2. Child's Play, the 2019 remake, uh, some video game shit. Now, does that throw you off? The 2019 You re- You say, you you really talked down to that. <laughs> Did I say that in a bad way? You said Child's Play 2019, as in, like, don't get too excited, But think folks. about, like, Child's Play's, like- Otherwise, I... this guy's going to be, like, 70. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Child's Play was in the 90s. <laughs> it was it? It's like yes. the, it's at least the late eighties. Like I think thirty years ago. Yeah. If and, and if he had that job then, yeah, he'd definitely be like, y- like very old. Okay. It's so really old people cannot write comics. Confirmed. Or, or 65. No, I'm just saying this comic that we just read <laughs> was not written by a seventy year old man. It had like the, obviously it had the stench of a young person all over it. It did. <laughs> it definitely felt like somebody that was in the peak of their career, not the downward spiral. Yeah. So. Well, another rising star on this book, the art was by Vanessa Cardinale. Okay, who who had two books come out this week? Oh, wow, good for that's you. A, that's a rising star. It is. Okay, the other book that she had, people were, like, wanting, and it's this weird book from this metal... <laughs> people, hey, get this. People were, like, wanting. Desiring it? <laughs> no, okay. It was, like she was some kind of rising star no, it, it was like a, It was a bit of a spec book for this metal band. <laughs> I feel like we have to acknowledge why you keep saying, like... A rising star. Because <laughs> in the image write-up for this it's, book. Yeah. It calls her a rising star. It okay. calls her rising uh, star, God, Vanessa she Cardinale. Is, okay, she is the rising star. Yes, she I, is. Yes. yes. I, th- I thought it, no offense to Tyler, uh, but- Whose star has risen. Yeah, but Vanessa's rising star, hell yeah. Her other book, okay, it, people were clamoring over, it's like this metal band called The Clay People. You ever heard of this band before? No. Don't. It's awful. Okay. Oh. So the only thing good about this comic book is Vanessa, so they got lucky getting Vanessa. But What uh, kind of metal well, is it? Okay, I didn't read the comic book, but the band is oh. terrible. The, <laughs> oh, band, okay. the band itself, The Clay People. You already uh, knew who they were, or you looked them up I went and listened to it. Okay. We could listen to it after this pod. You will not be impressed. Okay. Um, it's music for like people who comment on Pornhub. I would say the oh, whole that is a that is a specific demographic, and I applaud those people for being so into the image that they just saw that they wanted to say something real quick about it. Yeah, <laughs> this scene really spoke to me. You know, yeah, Horn Dog Four Twenty. I think this video was a four star. Yeah. I didn't believe the acting in this. Well, you're not supposed to. But Vanessa's artwork. She really didn't sell it that, they, that she was that guy's stepsister? Is that really threw off your rhythm? See? And imagine the type of music those people listen to. <laughs> All right. Slumber on Image Comics. Okay. Dream Hunters. This move, this book was, this comic book was great. I loved it. I went, I did the same thing I did last week, and I pre-ordered everything you could pre-order for it. For, after from reading. the synopsis, I was like, I think they're explaining Nightmare on Elm Street. Like it sounded like when you go to sleep, a serial killer attacks you. Oh, I yeah. see. And yeah. I, and I was like, oh, so this is just going to be a Nightmare on Elm Street knockoff. It is so far from that. The nope. synopsis of the book was a complete disjustice to what the book actually was. It's like if Dog the Bounty Hunter <laughs> had the ability to go into your dreams and get meth addicts out of there. D- yes, if you you have reoccurring nightmares that are and you're constantly haunted by like a character that's a symbol of your past. Uh-huh. These people hook you up to a machine, walk through a dream door. Monsters Inc. you. <laughs> yeah, seriously, yeah, one hundred percent right. Is this the plot line of Monsters Inc.? <laughs> well, like the the way to get into someone's other uh, ha- closet is through like a door portal. Yeah, 
that you can walk, like you like okay. log into and walk in. It's yeah. like monsters in the closet. They've yeah. got a, yes. an actual method. You never seen Monsters there. Inc.? No. This oh. is shocking. This is the most important thing on the episode right yeah. now. Is finding Monsters out University this. is my favorite Disney movie. You know what? There's that um, can't be possible. Oh, it is. Oh, it's a fire movie. There's a handful of things, <laughs> and I, I personally, being a comic book and a nerd person, I always feel like. I'm probably the person who stuck around watching cartoons and shit too long. Yeah. But there are a lot of cartoons I feel like people who graduated the same year as me love that I have never seen. Oh, boy. Like, Hey Arnold. Oh, wow. Moving I, Football Head. I've never seen that show. Well, and good it's for com- you. I own it on DVD. Do you really? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. and Angry Beavers. We're basically, I've never seen Angry Beavers. Holy shit. Whoa. I've never seen, do you remember that show? Cat Dog? Cat Dog, yeah. Yes. I've Classic. never seen that. So you you missed uh, Nickelodeon 2.0, because you probably got Doug, Rugrats, and, yes. and Ren, yeah. Ren and Stimpy. I was there for all that okay. stuff. That was the later part of the Orange Years. Yeah. And I remember Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Mm-hmm. I remember watching that show. Okay. Completely out on the other stuff. Even SpongeBob. I've never watched an episode of SpongeBob all the way through. That's a little late for us. Is yeah. it okay? Yeah, but it's. I group it with those other things. Yeah, and it's like certainly memeable, so it feels like it is ever. very memeable. Yeah. Um. And ah, it, real monsters. I was in for. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I watched That's that. about us. I was in but there. Hey Arnold, I think is the big one that people are like, "What the fuck." <laughs> You never watched Football Head? <laughs> you gotta go back and crush all that you stuff. You gotta watch the Stoop Kid episode. I yeah. always, I oh, always hate... He's afraid to leave his stoop. When people tell you to watch something that was important to their childhood, that was very of a time. Right. And it's like, you have to understand that I'm a grown man, and <laughs> this is not gonna hit the same way. Like, just because you love, like, um... What's that Rodney Dangerfield like Ladybugs? Ladybugs. Like, like it doesn't mean that someone's gonna watch it a, later. Like Labyrinth. I feel like that. Ooh, you know what you know what gets a referenced a lot is Goonies. That yeah. Goonies is a movie where people are like, You don't love Goonies or you haven't you don't watch it every single Stand year. By me. Um, I watched Goonies. It it wasn't a pivotal part of my childhood. No, I think th- this is why this movie sticks out to me, because I think it's a generational thing and our generation is a little too young to have like had Goonies be a formative viewing experience. Right. right. And those people just can't conceptualize <laughs> no, that a world without the Goonies that you, being that you could be young and have this experience without having soaked in Goonies. Okay, one thing that holds up though, uh in middle school I was a big Seinfeld fan. And uh, my wife has never seen Seinfeld, and we've been watching it, and mm-hmm. we fucking cry every other episode. We're laughing so hard. Nice. That, it is a great show. That show is like totally like holds up all of uh, the racism aside, I guess, of that actor. Who? Uh, Kramer. Kramer. Oh, yeah. Uh, had a yeah. It, we, we don't have to IRL rehash had, it. Had a yeah yeah. But a couple, a couple problematic things about Seinfeld, but I one of my on the whole. On the whole, one of my top five shows of all time. Yeah. It's super great. But we're not here to talk about top five nah, shows. No, let's of get all back time. to Slumber. Okay, so here the thing about but, Slumber though. Oh, we were get, we were in the middle of I think explaining the core concept. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is that you're they're hitman for the star of your nightmares. And so you yes. basically hire them to solve your sleeping problem. Yep. I don't think the patients know that they're walking into their heads and straight up like shooting their Nightmare perpetrator in the face. Correct, yeah. Because <laughs> uh, you wouldn't sign on for that. Yeah, but they're basically like, okay, problem solved, and they wipe their hands clean, and mm-hmm. the people and walk, walk away and can sleep at night. Here's what I love about this book, is we actually talked about this last week, how Image sometimes does these oversized issues for number ones. Mm-hmm. This felt like that. Um, it, yeah. This comic book did so many things where it's like an, uh, an inexperienced comic, or I, let's say this, an inexperienced writer would have gone with just one thing and been like, we, right. ha- we have this dream thing. But it's also like a noir murder mystery yes. right. um, about the sleepwalking killer and then like that cop's kind of like story or right. whatever that we get that's equally as interesting. Um, Honestly, when giving the core concept of this book, I was like, I don't know which thread to lead with. Right. There's a lot. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of meat on the bone for this comic, which 
this felt like two comic books I've read together, smushed together, and something that worked really well. <laughs> yeah, it's like putting chips in your peanut butter sandwich. Like, fuck yeah, just went went really well together. Mm-hmm. Should be weird, but it worked. <laughs> Throw some pickles in there. Throw some pickles. <laughs> uh, but there, so there is a character that seems to be able to is like a nightmare being that can hijack people's bodies while they sleep. Yeah, it's like it's personified as this young kid. Looks like Slender Man. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like the young the young I think it's a girl. Yeah. Is like the perpetrator of all these like uh attacks. Mm-hmm. And basically she through the through your dreams takes over your body and causes you to murder other people. So she's called like the sweep the sleepwalking murders or whatever. Is yeah. that what they're referred to? Yeah. And so that's an angle. And the the little girl's looking for this woman. Who's invading people's dreams. Yeah. Because right. she's a threat to her. Yeah. And I think there's like other characters in people's dreams who are like, this fucking lady comes and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. she and marks like us up. Capable but... of killing us. <laughs> um so I but I but they also seem to have a past. Like the dream hunter. Mm-hmm. Is aware of this serial killer nightmare character and is like, tell me what you fucking know when she's in nightmares and people's yeah. pe- like people's dream characters have crossed paths with this person in the past. So she's like slowly putting her case together. Meanwhile, this other character is murdering people trying to draw her out. So they're going to they're going to there's going to be some meeting or come up and soon the character, the nightmare character is currently within the one of the lead detectives on the case to find her to, to solve these murders. Right. Um, which, you know, they were obviously, th- this is, the comic seems to exist in a world wherein magic isn't, or these like really supernatural things aren't necessarily commonly accepted. We've got like an inside peek on things as they really are. Yeah, so would like, you agree? Like her yes. sidekick is a zombie, <laughs> like a zombie elf. Yeah, like, I think it's probably someone from a dream she brought back. Yes. Okay, that's what it is. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And so I got a very like, um, it's like a, a digital cryptic tale. Like these people have formed like this cult that they have somehow formed like. Uh, software that has been calculated by the devil to go inside people's minds <laughs> and haunt people. And that premise alone, you're just like, well, fuck yeah, let's right. get going. They're like, yeah, yeah, read more of this. Like dream hackers. He- yeah. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> dream hackers. Give me some more of that shit. But the, the rest of the world is so based in reality mm-hmm. that the police trying to solve the case are like, all these people, People must be part of the same cult because right. they're leaving like call signs yeah. and the kill pattern is exactly the same yeah. every time, but they're all different suspects. So how are they connected? They're like confounded by it, right. which is like a whole other interesting level of this. Right. So, yeah, I, I, I agree. I don't think there's like anything magical about the world. It's a very much like a world we live in, but these groups of people have found some way to get into people's minds and like solve murders and do all that shit. So it's very cool. Yeah, this book was fire. I loved it. It was a complete mind freak. <laughs> oh, it was yeah. a Chris Angel. Yeah, well, this I, this I, book was a certified so Chris Angel. It's not often that we read like an image or a hot like dark horse or something like that like book that we're pumped on that's indie where we know fucking nothing about the author. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. And the uh, it comes out like swinging. Normally, it's like, oh, cool. I hope their second book's better. This book's great. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. Yeah, I, I think re- the last book we were the, that hyped on that with an unknown writer was Land of the Living Gods. Yes, which we read like three or four weeks ago. Which same thing, like it was another screenwriter who took on the role of a comic book writer and you know did a pretty decent job with the book. So, right. Yeah, we we may be seeing a trend of more screenwriters hopping on <laughs> and more or the, comic book writers becoming screenwriters. Yeah, yeah. or that that book uh, by the horns, by the horns. Oh. Yeah, yeah, by the horns. Yeah, by the horns. Like, and that book was like. Freaking awesome. Which, by the way, that author of that series joined our Patreon. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, so I, that's, in, what? that's insane. I saw that. Um, but yeah, that Does was- Does he listen to the show? Yeah. I mean, I guess- Yeah, he, yeah. Made, he made a meme of like a, tw- a Twitter thing that we did. So what? What, our Ghostwriter episode, yeah. when we talked about 
Ghost Rider being on a Segway, uh-huh. he like photoshopped that for us <laughs> and posted it on our Twitter. Well, uh, when I and everybody I'm out of the loop, that's every, awesome. Everybody uh, listening to this uh, podcast should do the same. When I saw that, I pre-ordered the uh, trade for Buy the Horns. Oh, for, for you know the, what's, you know what's funny about that trade? Uh, no, when you get it, turn to the back and you'll see a familiar name on it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's my name. Okay, because they use my byline for the back of the book. I forgot about that. Which is fucking crazy. You got a byline on it. Well, it's 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 coming. Volume two is gonna be coming out. Yeah. And I, and I was like, I want to get read up on it. Oh, he's a fan of the show. Yeah. So. We have to have him on because he thinks that our metal takes are not good. Oh, for real? Yeah, we're battling with our metal band takes. I don't oh. really have metal band. Oh, takes. I got. I got. You're too opinionated about it. <laughs> That's the only take I have is that you care too much about metal. That's a good point. <clears throat> oh, uh, metal take. I tried to listen to the Vane <laughs> FM album. Fucking fire. They're basically the Mars Volta of metal. It, you, you, this is why you're Vane it, FM. It's, it's just noise. Just sounds like something so shitty that I would never. So want. they they're called <laughs> Vane, and they had to change their name. I think like. So the, everybody just refers to them as Vane. But to mm-hmm. find them, you have to call them Vane FM, I guess. Okay. Ugh. It doesn't sound like the Mars Volta. It's fucking heavier, way heavier. It's not that technical. I've heard heavier. Not that technical. I'm sure you have. Ever I heard s- of Michael Bolton? <laughs> I sent you guys today a picture of a System of a Down duffel bag. Oh, this that is fun. popped up in my Instagram feed for sale. And I thought it was a made-up product on a meme. You know when, like... <laughs> <laughs> Wake up! Do you guys follow like fuck advertisements? Yes. Or, oh yeah. Or like boys who can cook, or like something like that, or obvious plant, or like <laughs> these accounts that like just show pictures that you're like, this can't be real. Uh-huh. I thought it was account an account like that. It was not. It was a brand new product yep. sold by like Warner Media or something. That was the old system of a down toxicity toxicity album cover on a duffel bag with like meathead crossfit sort of gym stuff on the sides of it and mm-hmm. just straight up the album cover printed on the majority of the duffel bag. Yeah. It was confounding. I don't know who this duffel bag is for in <laughs> modern America. I do. And he's at the table. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it people who are so ironic they're completely lost in themselves? I, uh, people who buy this don't buy it ironically. It's for people that grew up with the music and are like gym, maybe gym rats or nostalgic about System of a Down. And younger kids in their 20s are now finding Corn, Limp Biscuit, Tox, uh, 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 System of a Down, uh, oh, Chevelle. Like, so they're weird. all finding okay, when these I, bands. The idea of 20 year olds listening to this shit is insane okay, when to I, me. When I went to see Vane live, mm-hmm. it was all. People under 21, most of them wearing giant slipknot shirts mm-hmm. and like, uh, what the fuck? Like, like bands like that. Like, so that m- makes Mud sense Vane. because Vane sounds like a 90s, yeah. early aught metal band. Yeah. I think they are come from hardcore. Fucking let's not do this. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it, it, it's whatever. But the, 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 the thing, the thing about like it is that I love like, that you're like, we're not doing this because yeah. I can do 20 more minutes. But it's like, no, nobody gives a shit. But the funny take is that new metal is back and like, it's cool. Joke's on you, baby. <laughs> new metal never left. That's a good point. I mean, with Code Orange opening up for Corn, it's like, yeah. uh, something's, <laughs> well, something's hinky. <laughs> yeah. I know the band, um, I listened to a band called Wargasm UK. Oh, and they have a line in one of their songs that's like the guitarist stops and is like, what do you think? And then the lead singer goes, hell yeah, it's shreddy as fuck. New metal is back. And then the song kicks back in. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Yay. I I did not expect I wouldn't consider them new metal, but I think there is there is a young people do have a romanticism about new metal for some reason I can't like put my finger on. I mean we just we, because it's so counterculture maybe. We may be reaching the uncanny valley of new metal and yeah. appreciation. I also think that younger people <laughs> don't care as much and like don't experience irony in the same way. And they're just like oh, they're just like it resonates with me so like, I'm, I like I'm it. into it. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. They look cool. I love how uh-huh. like shocking it is. Yeah. Well and every new metal song's under three minutes so it fits well on their TikToks. There you go. <laughs> A uh, little Uzi Vert, big into it as well. I also think, mm. too, there was like, um, the, 
some new metal lyrics are so like lack so much subtlety mm-hmm. and yes. to us at the time that made them bad now so much of pop culture and pop music completely lacks subtlety mm-hmm. where like a literal chorus of a song will be like you made me sad so i fucked your dad <laughs> you know what i mean just like straight up just saying right. like the dumb shit that just baseline just rhymes. pops into your head and so songs like she fucking hates me tra la 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 oh yeah doesn't sound like the worst song ever written anymore you know it fits it fits in with the landscape of the sort of songs that people write now i also think the like production value of like follow the leader or iowa or like <laughs> okay so, for, we're no. not talking about that because no. it's it, it's like we're now that's patreon fodder we need to end this and take oh, it to patreon can i say though Agreed. i do want to i did want to mention and this is comic book related um, because we were writing, a, we were talking about the author of Slumber, or Tyler Burton Smith, and being a screenwriter and stuff. Did you guys see the the things going around about James Gunn's storyboards for the new Guardians of the Galaxy no, movie? No. no. So he's got stacks and stacks of paper, and he shared some of the storyboards that apparently he drew, <laughs> and people were freaking out like, "Oh my God, game changer!" But the drawings look like, I'm not kidding, like a kindergartner yes. drew them. Like, they might as well be done with crayons. And to look at, like, these childlike scribblings and be like, epic. Oh, my God, huge reveal that, like, Squiggle is jumping on Squiggle. <laughs> like, <laughs> Squiggle's going to be in the movie? Was cracking my shit up. James Gunn is one of the most vocal people on Twitter. He does say whatever the fuck he thinks. And, like, yeah. it's great because when, like, these fake nerd sites will be like, so-and-so is going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, he'll respond to it and retweet it and be like, no, yeah. that person's not in here. You're bullshit. And then they have to, like, to delete all the tweets and, like, that account is, like, just not seen as viable anymore. It's it's amazing. So. So if, if you don't have, if you have, if your account's no longer viable, we feel for you. James Gunn did it. Bye. Bye. First Issue Club is brought to you by Boulevard Brewing Company via Space Camper Cosmic IPA. Our music is courtesy of the fine folks at Primary Color Music. You can find, friend, and follow us on social media at First Issue Club or firstissueclub.com. You can support First Issue Club by joining us on our Patreon for additional content at patreon.com slash firstissueclub.com.